Good to see you all. It feels like it was a long time, huh? This time. It's not that long, but it kind of feels that way. Good. So today we're going to talk about the pulses, huh? Jingwei pulses. And um, <clears throat> I think most of you, yeah, most of you have come through the sh come up through Shanghai and have now arrived at the Jingwei. So you've already got a very important introduction if not the most important introduction into uh, the type of pulse diagnosis that goes with this system. Um, you know, some of you are, jumped in at Jingwei, I think maybe you, Ryan, no, uh, yeah, is that you, you're Ryan? No. Lucas. Lucas, sorry. Sorry, I still don't remember. Okay. Um, so, you know, so then it's going to be a little bit like jumping and uh, learning to swim in the deep end a little bit. Because uh, <clears throat> there's a certain theory that I use, a theoretical structure that I use to help understand how this pulse system works that is actually conveyed in the Shahan pulse diagnosis. And we call that the herb pulse methods. Basically, you can kind of like herb families, you know, or formula families. You could, a formula family is kind of like a group of formulas that they all have one uh, herb in common that is a very important component of of its ingredients and, and, and is one of the very important driving forces of its activity, right? So you could say, for example, Guizhou Tang has Guizhou in it. That's part of the Guizhou family. And uh, the, 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 the functions of the herb Guizhou are very pivotal in that formula. So from that perspective, you can also kind of catalog pulses, just kind of like we do it also in abdominal diagnosis, right? What's a Guizhou abdominal finding? And it's kind of the same in pulses where we say, what's a Guizhou pulse finding? So that kind of little piece of information, it's a small piece of information that actually in the Shahalan pulse diagnosis course took a long while to convey because you have to build up to it. But... Um, it helps a lot with understanding how Shahan and pulse diagnosis works. Um, so that that information is not going to get repeated here. So that that you'll get that part when when you do the Shahan. However, um, for the people who have gotten that, and in the meantime, because this I, I miss, I'm yeah, I think this is like a year ago, right, when we did that seminar. So in the meantime, you've been thinking about this type of pulse diagnosis. You've been kind of using this system for now about a year. So there's a certain level of, okay, I've gotten used to this now, and now all of a sudden you realize that it all gets shaken up, right? And the reason, <laughs> the reason why it gets shaken up is because, well, it is not Shanghan anymore, it is Jingwei. And, and one of the characteristics of Jingwei is that it's more, it's more complicated, right? I always say that Shanghan Lun, uh, the, the type of diseases, um, the, the, the pulse diagnosis, the, the clinical presentation, everything is very very simplex. Everything is very clear, very black and white. Like the, 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 it's very clearly delineated and demarcated. Like, oh, this is this, but this is no longer this because this is now that, right? This is Yang Ming, this is Taiyang, this is Xiaoyang, this is Taiyin. It's very clearly demarcated. Like there's no real room for confusion there, you know? Whenever, all the difficulty in the Shahan Lun comes from combined patterns or mistreatment patterns. Because the, the actual basic stuff is very, very straightforward. I mean, it's very simple. How you treat Taiyang, how you treat Yangming, it couldn't be more simple. It couldn't be more straightforward, right? Uh, it gets complicated when, of course, some idiot mistreats, uh, you know, Taiyang and it becomes something weird, or they mistreat Yangming and it becomes something weird. And then it's also the pulse kind of changes a little bit away from those basic pulse patterns, but still there, it is still not as convoluted as Jingwei pulse diagnosis, right? But now when we're going to start doing Jingwei pulse diagnosis, you'll see all of a sudden, like, wait a minute, this is a formula that, in which the herb greater plays a very prominent, important role, but there's no greater pulse to go off of, right? And there's, of course, important reasons uh, why that is. I mean, and, and the primary reason, to sim simply put, is just because this is complex disease, and complex disease just means messy, right? Because the word zha uh, in Chinese is also the word for messy, <laughs> chaotic, right? So it's not just complex, it's just also chaotic and messy, right? So, and that's kind of what we'll see here. Now, ultimately, if you get Shanghan and you look at Jingwei, you will still be able to understand the cause for the mess, right? Like, so why is there no, there should be a greater pulse? And then I actually should, would say, well, actually, there is, but 
it's being masked by XYZ, problem XYZ, and problem XYZ most commonly will be the presence of a pathological product, right? Uh, phlegm, stasis, water, food stagnation, you know, that kind of stuff. There's a pus, you know, there's a pathological product, the product of a pathology, a physical, the, pro, the pathology has now, is, is on a much more material level and has now produced something has it has created something physical measurable uh, material you could put it in a cup if you had to right and that physical material pathological entity tweaks how the pulse manifests itself right so we all learn that when there's water in the body the young of the pulse can't lift right we've learned that like lingua jugantang you know the trim positions are deep that kind of stuff right and so um in the same fashion, like uh, normally the pulse should be X, Y, Z, but then it doesn't because now there's, for example, food stagnation or there is pus accumulation or there is uh, stagnant blood. And, and that kind of tweaks how the pulse can show itself. It's, it's kind of the same way, right? So that's, uh, that's going to be one of the big, big characteristics of the Jingwe pulse diagnosis, right? I just mentioned material and physical which is also a huge difference with Shanghan Lun. Shanghan diseases are purely functional, right? It is the function of your body's ability to, especially at the initial level, stay warm, right? And, and staying warm by making sure that there is uh, integrity in the, um, in the amount of water, physiological amount of water that is sitting outside of your yang, right? Because that's the function of Taiyang. We say, well, what is the function of Taiyang? It's to warm you up. Well, actually, no. That the function of Taiyang is to cool you down. What do you mean, Arno? Well, yeah, it's to keep your interior warm, but to keep your, you know, by kind of making sure that your yang doesn't escape outward through the exterior. And to do that, you have to have a proper amount of water on the outside of your fire, right? So uh, the function of Yang Ming is for yang to in stay internal. Function of Shaoyang is for Young to go inward and uh, start tr uh, transiting into the solid realm and create yin, etc., etc., etc. So to communicate with yin and so forth and so forth, right? So, you know, on a Shanghan disease level, it's all functional, right? There is no real material change in your body yet. When you have like a Taiyang disease, Guizhitang, it doesn't, there's no material change in your body. No tissues have changed, no organs have changed. No accumulation of pathological byproduct. Yeah, at most, maybe a tiny bit of a, you know, a little bit of snot in your nose or something like that. But still, there's no change to the tissue. Maybe the excretion of the of the of the of the snot changes a bit. But otherwise, it's is a it's mostly 95% a functional problem, right? Now we can go more material, right? We go from functional to more material as we start to then, of course, see. Um, you know, like say, oh, urine accumulates in the bladder. Ultimately, blood seeps into that urine. Ultimately, that blood becomes dry blood, <coughs> blood stasis, those kind of things. It does exist, but it takes a long time before that happens. And <coughs> it's in the beginning, it's all very simple. <coughs> Excuse me, all very simple functional problems. But the Jingwe is different, right? Because the Shanghan speaks to the six Qi, which means that belongs to uh, heaven, right? The six Qi belong to heaven. And heaven is young. And heaven is chi, and heaven is immaterial, right? Um, while the five, the 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 jingwe speaks to the five phases, the five elements, right? And last time I looked, a tree doesn't grow in the sky, right? Uh, the earth element doesn't just float in the air. The water element doesn't just uh, hang out uh, in the air, right? Those are physical, material things, right? So the five elements they tell you the story about the story about earth. Right? So they tell you about the material, it's more yin, the, ma the material aspect of the body, the material changes of the body, the organs. In Shanghan, we talk about confirmations, which ultimately is mostly, at the initial stages at least, deregulation of the function of the channels that are linked to those confirmations. Right? The, ch the channel physiology is impaired. Right? But ultimately, and later, later, later down the line, then the organ physiology gets a bit impaired. Right? But what we have in the Jingwe is that it is five elements, it is uh, a material, it is earthly, it is yin, it is immediately also, uh, it has a pathological product that is part of it. There is a material 
thing and there also is um, a, a change to uh, the, the tissues of the organs and so you'll see also a lot more illnesses pertaining to tissue changes of organs right whether that is an abscess whether that is a tumor or mass a growth an accumulation whether there there's uh, a lot more swelling or like changes to the physical appearance of the of, of the tissues and the and the human body right so that's also going to be a, a huge difference right? um, yeah so that's kind of what we're looking at so uh, from Shanghai pulse diagnosis you can extrapolate a little bit about Jingwei pulse diagnosis so if you know what a Guizhou pulse is and you know what a Mahuang pulse is and you know you can kind of look at some Jingwei formulas that have Guizhou Mahuang in it and kind of say like oh yeah this formula I probably could use it going off of these and these pulses right but the other way around is extremely difficult it's very difficult to go off of a, a Jingwei pulse and extrapolate the Shanghai pulse that's that's a lot harder right so um, yeah, because ultimately a lot of these Jingwei diseases, at their early stages, they were Shanghan diseases, right? They were they came from a very benign, very simple bit of a common cold or something like that. But then ultimately, ultimately, it got worse. It became complicated. The the not only the the function of the organ was uh, damaged, but also the the material uh, tissues of the organ got damaged, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It became much more. Uh, physical much more uh, worldly or uh, earthly as opposed to celestial right it's much more terrestrial of a problem right so that's why uh, it's going to be difficult the pulse is going to change considerably and it's going to be difficult good um, Dr. Tian I just put this here again because I want to I, I, I know I don't need to repeat this and I, I because we've come a long way already, right? But I do want to stress that um, this is not Shanghan Lun or Jingwei pulse diagnosis, period. This is a system of Shanghan Jingwei pulse diagnosis, right? And it happens to be the only really plausible, consistently accurate system that I've ever come across in all my years in China. And you know what? There's still a lot of people in China and there's still a lot of people who have been in China, who still go to China, who are in China, and nobody's finding any system that is even remotely close to what, what the Tian family had, right? As such, this is something to be treasured. So when I teach you this seminar, that's why I don't teach pulse seminars by them, by, on their own as a standalone thing. That's why you can't register for a pulse seminar, you know, uh, just, just to come take that pulse seminar. That's why even... People who have like paid for the whole program but only had the intention of coming to the Pulse Seminar, we've always pushed them away and said, I'm sorry, here's your money back. We don't want you. You know, like on many occasions that's happened. So I'm very protective of this material because my teacher was protective of this material. Um, taught, you know, he, he taught a little bit more than his teacher did in a, in a little bit more of an educational setting, but still not like... Hey everybody, here he goes, you know, here's all the stuff, you know, you can have it, you know, he never did that either. And then his teacher, to my knowledge, to my knowledge of, of to my current uh, understanding of looking into the Tian lineage and, and, and kind of what they've done, I only know of one instance where Tian, so far where Tian actually taught his disciples the pulse, uh, the pulse uh, Keys, we call them, right? the keys to the pulse, right? the, 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 the secret, to say, the instructions, let's put it that way. Uh, I don't like the, to use the word secret because it makes it look something like, ooh, very Indiana Jones-like. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, if, what is a secret? It's something that somebody is not telling you. So ultimately, it is kind of like a kept secret. If I'm not telling you, I'm just keeping it secret. So that is ultimately the truth. So same thing for you guys. Um, I teach this for you, for your personal use in your clinic, so you may become the best practitioner in your respective towns or respective cities or you know wherever you live and practice. So you make, so you can uh, create a, a lot of good in your community. So you can really uh, uh, alleviate the suffering of your patients and and make people healthy, and so you can make a good living, right? Um, I am anti-communism. Right, so let that be, be on the record once and for all. You know, it's like I am. I've, you know, any anybody who likes communism has never lived in a communist country. That's what I always say. You know, uh, 
I am anti-communism, and I, and this whole thing about well, yeah, you know, if it's such a good system, why do, why doesn't just every everybody just just give it to everybody? It doesn't work that way. It's kind of like with Tibetan Buddhism, right? Um, a lot of those secret teachings are available now, one way or the other. But it's not like there's a bunch of enlightened people walking around and filling filling the streets. You know, like you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> It only has true value when giving to when given to a person who really is ready for it to receive it and who really wants it and who who you know is gonna do good with it, right? So I've been you know you come here tells me already you are fertile fertile ground you are of the right wood for me to sculpt something out of that's gonna be lasting, right? You come here to the class, but even then I still put you to the ringer, as far as you can't just come to one class or you can't just like. You know, blow at, blow smoke up my ass, and like, oh no, you're such a nice guy. Teach me the pulse. I'm like, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. That doesn't work that way. No, you come, you come to class. I see that growing inside of you. You know, I prep you. I walk you through the steps. I mature your mind. I, I, you know, as far as the Chinese medicine, I, other stuff, I can't. I'm, I am not mature enough myself uh, to mature you in any other way than Chinese medicine. But to bring you to the point where you're like, man, like. I'm, the pulse is like, that's like the thing that's going to unlock it all. And that's what I try. And so then you get the pulses and, and all of a sudden this world opens up and your clinical practice just like, just takes flight, right? That's the goal, right? So it is for you, it is for your community, <coughs> it is to, for your family, for your children, for, you know, that's what I'm teaching this for, you know, and so that's why I want you to be uh, good guardians and understand that if you want to practice classically, you, you, you also have to practice the classical uh, code, the lifestyle, the code, which basically, you know, if Dr. Tian taught it to only the people who were really re ready for it, with whom he had that karmic connection, then it's still the same. It's still the same. And if anybody ever asks you, hey, give me those pulses, you know, like, then, then, then I hope that you'll tell them, like, you know, even if I give it to you, it doesn't mean you'll understand it, first of all. You know, it you gotta have to go through certain steps before your mind is ready to really absorb it, and then it, for it to make sense. And only after it makes sense will will you actually be able to use it in clinic, right? And so then you just say, hey, you know, I'm not the the one who's teaching this lineage right now. There are people teaching this lineage, and so you should just talk to those people, right? And that's uh, I still want to mention that, and that's why I kind of put Dr. Tan's smiley face here, so that <laughs> so that you know that. That his he is always looking over uh, over our shoulder, you know. It's like <laughs> they got yeah. This is a good day. On a bad day, he didn't want to take pictures. You know? This is his good day. Yeah. So um, it's the only picture of him, actually, to my knowledge, anyway. So yeah. So yeah. Um, be good guardians of the material. That's all I wanted to say. I know I've said this a million times before, but. Um, I will haunt you in your dreams if you don't. Uh, good. So the, I want to start with a little bit of theory. And, and some, again, some theory is necessary. When we did the Shanghan, we had to go through some pulse theory, right? Quite a bit, actually. Now with the Jingwe, we will again go through some pulse theory. Um, different theory. Because it's Jingwe, it's a little bit of a different thing. And I want to introduce you to this thing here. And... You've all seen this, you know, like a lot of uh, people teach this at nauseum and it, it's this like, you know, like, you know, I don't know, like kind of often like the whole Bagua Shenzhen, you know, like, I don't know if you know the concept in Chinese, like the, the, the Bagua, Mr. Bagua, they call it in Chinese. It's like a, uh, it's like psychics, you know, people who are psychics, you know, they'll be like, Oh yeah, it's a good day for I don't know cutting your hair or something like that, and so they they talk about this stuff a lot. So that's why I generally shy away from it because it doesn't really belong in a medical context. It doesn't really belong in a medical context. This is uh, the di these are the diagrams that Fuxi, which is the first mythical emperor of China, mythical ruler of China. Um, he came up with these, right? So one day sitting by the river, horse comes out of the river, it's got like some type of pattern as the water drips off the horse in its in its skin, in its pelt. It's got some type of a pattern and he just all of a sudden gets this like insight into, oh my God, I could actually organize my way of looking at the world using a numerical system and linking it with the directions, right? Uh, north, south, east, west, into center, those kinds of things. So that's kind of how he came up with these systems, right? He saw the, the river diagrams and the law 
writings, He Tu and Luo Shu, right? And this has nothing to do with medicine, right? Like I said, this is used in divination, this is used in feng shui, this is used in, I don't know, I, I think there's like Taoist acupuncture, I mean, this is used in all those things, right? So it's not exclusively, in martial arts, right? It's not exclusively medical. So then Arnaud, why are you bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because Dr. Tian, when he was teaching his students about pulses, he would mention these kinds of things. He would write, um, you know, something liver, blah, 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 and then he would do eight solid dots or something, something drain pericardium, and he would write four solid dots, right? So clearly what that shows us is that Dr. Tian, in his mind, had a concept of, of this system, right? That he was aware of this kind of way of organizing and, and labeling the phenomenal world. It's kind of, this is a cosmology-based system, right? And so, um, if he had that in his mind, I want to at least recreate that a little bit in our minds. And it's going to reveal to us very important things, because if Dr. Tian had not labeled his uh, organs pulse relations, relations with the river diagram symbols, then I would never have found out what I'm about to teach you now in the next coming hour. Because my teacher sure never told me. Right? He just said, yeah, here's some stuff that my sister uh, took notes. My sister took some notes when she was studying with Dr. Tian. Uh, that's for you. You can, you can read this. Right? And, then for, and then for me began this journey of trying to figure this stuff out. Right? So without that, I wouldn't have figured it out either. So uh, the sage faces south when you're looking all the way up on the drawing, right? You're looking towards the top. That is the south fire element. The bottom, the north water element. To the left of the drawing is the east, the wood element. To the right of the drawing is the west, the metal element. And of course, in the center is the earth element, right? Solid dots means yin, means solid organs. Hollow dots means yang, means hollow organs, right? Solid dots means yin, means solid organs, and th therefore they are always even, right? Because even numbers are yin, right? And odd numbers are yang, right? So hollow dots that go with the yang, hollow organs are always an odd number, right? Uh, the very easy to remember the, 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 the numbers is like this, right? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's very easy to remember. One, you know, so that you don't have to like, what was the number for? You know, <laughs> just a bit, it's very easy to remember, right? It's, it's, no, it's not rocket science, right? So as such, as such, um, uh, you know, for example, the one hollow dot at the bottom here, the one hollow dot, uh, <clears throat> it's an odd number, which means it's young. It is in the north, right? which means that this is the young water, right? So that is the water element is in the north, and it is the, of those two organs, kidney and bladder, it is the bladder, right? So the, the number one goes with the bladder, right? Number three on the left, right, the three hollow dots, three hollow dots means young, right? It's an odd number, which means it's young. It's a hollow dot, which means it's young. So it goes with a hollow organ of the east of the wood. So in the east, we have liver and gallbladder, so the number three goes with the gallbladder. Right on top, you've got uh, the number seven, right? The seven hollow dots that goes with the small intestine. Right on the right, in the west, you've got the nine hollow dots uh, that goes with uh, the large intestine. Right in the center, you've got five hollow dots that goes with the stomach, the young earth, which is the stomach. Right, and then the yin dots, same thing. Uh, at the bottom, you've got uh, six solid dots, right? Six solid dots. So six is an even number. It is solid. So it, of course, is going to refer to uh, the solid organs of the water element because it's in the north. So that goes with the kidneys. Number six goes with the kidneys. On the left, number eight goes with the liver. On top, number, number two goes with the heart. To the uh, right on the west, number four goes with the lung. And of course, in the center, number 10 goes with the spleen, right? So that's the general number allocation. This is how you link the direction, yin yang, hollow versus solid, right? And uh, the numericals, right? The numerology of those of those uh, organs, right? Hollow versus solid organs, right? So that's basically 
um, which ones correspond with which ones. That's pretty straightforward. So then, so then we start by looking at again Dr. Tian. Like in the we did this also in the Shahanun Pulse. Uh, we know it's like oh the Jiayin confirmation of the wind wood of the east. Remember that we said that yeah? during confirmation of the wind wood of the east, and then we said well you got drain liver and you got drain pericardium, right? Drain liver. Uh, we said is uh, E, right, the, the, the stems and, in stems and branches, it is uh, the E wood, which is the yin wood, right, and then a drain pericardium belongs to the ministerial fire, it doesn't have a direction, it doesn't belong to the east, doesn't have a reaction, and therefore it doesn't have that kind of stem branch uh, allocation either, right, and then we started talking about um, what in what position do they get diagnosed, Right, so the liver we find in the left guan position. We all know that that's pretty straightforward. And then the pericardium belongs to the ministerial fire. Right, so the ministerial fire. Right, we say that is to be found in the right hand <coughs> chur position. But that's when we're just talking about ministerial fire. That's when we're talking about that from a perspective of you know just the functional aspect of things. But when you're actually talking about where do we actually diagnose that physical material organ, then you see a change. And how do we, how did I get prompted to the change? So the difference is that Jueyin Tanzong, Tanzong, you know, CV17, you know, that's the pericardium front move point, right? The Jueyin pericardium is indicated as having four solid dots. And four solid dots, if you go back to the chart here, where are the four solid dots? Wait, wait a minute. In the west. And it is normally, which one? What It, it indicates which organ? This, is it yin or yang? It's even or odd? It's even, right? It's solid, which, which makes it's yin, it's yin. So it's the solid organ of the west, which means it's the lung. So Dr. Tian is superimposing the pericardium's organ position with the lung position. Right, so that's a very important change because we all know that the pericardium, you know, as an organ is up here in the upper burner. It sits in between the heart and the lung, right? It's that membrane ar around the heart. So if you're looking for the organ, you shouldn't be looking in the chirp position because the chirp positions as far as location in the body, they speak to the lower part of the body, the lower burner, below the belly button. There is no pericardium below your belly button. Now the function of the pericardium is also performed below the belly button. You know, just the fact that you have water in your lower burner in which your kidneys are floating. But that is just a functional perspective. That's indeed truly saying, okay, Xiaoyang triple warmer is to be found also in the left hand, in the right hand shirt position. But the pericardium itself, the organ of the pericardium itself is to be found on the right hand chun position. Right, and this becomes very important in Jingwei. This is completely irrelevant in Shanghai uh, pulse diagnosis because in Shanghai pulse diagnosis we only look at the foot channels. We don't look at the hand channels. So in Shanghai pulse diagnosis we never look at the pericardium channel because that's a hand channel. Right, but in Jingwei, it's not channel based, so we don't care about hand channel, foot channel, any of that. Right, in Jingwei this becomes important. This becomes important. So. I think, um, let me quickly. yeah, I'll explain exactly a little bit more why, oops, why uh, uh, in the right hand uh, turn position. But that's the first change, uh, that we have to flip it around. We have to flip uh, the left, the right hand chur to the right hand turn. So the pericardium is now to be found in the right hand uh, turn position. This is a very important uh, change, <clears throat> right? And it'll become clear in a lot of, uh, a lot of formulas and a lot of uh, pathologies, and so it'll make a lot of sense. Practically speaking, um, we, I think I've talked about this. Inside the pericardium, what do we have inside the pericardium? We have nutritive, right? So there is a, it is a clear nutritive around the heart, right? It is a clear nutritive around the heart so that it is able to kind of contain the heat of the heart uh, stored the heat of the heart so that the young of the heart doesn't just leave the heart constantly, right? And so when the heart gets really warm or when it's beating harder, right? Then of course the pericardium starts to sweat and the pericardium starts to sweat basically 
that means that outside of the pericardium these little bit of drops of moisture start to form and then as that heat continues then that moisture evaporates and forms like a gas and that gas that rises that then rises inside that hollow space of the lung right and that is the process of the blood giving birth to chi right how we always talk about oh blood is the mother of chi yeah what does mothers do mothers give birth and and cook food and uh uh, the blood gives birth to the chi, which basically means that the blood warms up, the nutritive evaporates from the blood, this vapor cloud accumulates inside the lungs. So all the chi and nutritive inside the lung is exactly the chi and nutritive inside the pericardium. The only difference is that when it's in the pericardium, it's in liquid form. When it's in the lung, it's in gaseous form. So in, in, when the nutritive is in the lung, it's a gas. When nutritive is in the pericardium, which means inside the blood vessels, it's a liquid. That's the primary difference. But it's exactly the same thing. Right? It's, of course, then that gas that cools off as soon as you breathe in. You breathe in, you're pulling in the ambient air from outside of you. That gas cools off. It forms rain. Instead of remaining in a cloud form, it becomes a liquid form. And it falls down onto the earth. And that's, of course, then how that chi of in, is born in the lungs. It turns into water and the lung becomes the upper source of fresh water. And then that water rains down on the earth and it starts to replenish the, the, the moisture in the earth that then seeps down into the earth and ultimately collects in the water element, which is those mineral beds, those salt uh, aquifers deep under the ground. Right? So that's the first thing that we need to change. When we're using Jingwei pulse diagnosis, when we're looking at uh, Jingwei uh, disease conditions, right, we need to make that change in our mind so that we understand that the pericardium has to be uh, located on the right-hand turn position. That is the, the first change. Xiao Yin heart, two solid dots. Uh, you can look that up again in the chart. That is pretty standard, right? That is not, no change. It is the south. The color is red. The emperor... Imperial fire, right? It belongs to Ding, which is the yin fire diagnosed from the left one. Okay, no problem, right? That doesn't change, right? Shao yin kidneys, right? Six solid dots, right? That's exactly, remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? The six is in the north. The, it's the yin number of the north, right? It's the solid organ of the north, which is the kidneys. Color is black. Uh, it's the cold water. Um, it is kui. Quay is the yin water, right? The stem uh, for the yin water, and it's diagnosed from the left hand trip position. No problem. No problem. Straightforward stuff, very standard. No change there, right? Shaoyang gallbladder, right? Uh, oh, yeah, Arno, why do you uh, organize them like this? Well, we go from drain wood to fire. Imperial fire gives birth to ministerial fire. Ministerial fire gives birth to taiyin. Tain to Yang Ming, etc., etc. Right, so that's the sequence, right? So um, then we get to Shaoyang, right? The ministerial fire is born from imperial fire, right? So Shaoyang gallbladder, gallbladder belongs to the east. The numbers of the east are three and eight. Uh, gallbladder is a young organ, right? So it should have three hollow dots. Indeed, no changes there. Everything pretty straightforward. Three hollow dots. Uh, it's the young wood. It's the gallbladder. Uh, its color is green. Its stem is jia, which is young wood, and it's diagnosed from the left guan. No problem. Shaoyang triple burner. Shaoyang triple burner, because it belongs to ministerial fire, it actually doesn't really have a direction. But if you're just looking at it as being fire, then you can still say, okay, we put it on the, on the fire element in the south, right? Because you've got two types of fire. That's fine, too. But uh, strictly speaking, it doesn't have its own direction. It can basically kind of go everywhere, right? And so... Um, um, it's triple warmer, it's ministerial fire, it doesn't have stem or branches just like the other ones because there's only 10 stems here, right? And so it is diagnosed also like the pericardium from the right hand chair position, right? From the right hand chair position. But this is also where one of the changes starts to happen, right? All of a sudden, what do we see? We see that Dr. Tian uh, illustrates the triple burner with five hollow dots and what do the five hollow dots what organ do the five hollow dots normally go with it's the stomach right it's hollow so it's a young organ right 
and it's the number five. So you just do your calculation, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? So the five and the ten are the earth. Five is an odd number, so it's young earth. Ten is an even number, so it's yin earth. So five is the number for the hollow organ of the earth, which is the stomach. So here, Dr. Tian basically says that the triple burner, right, is going to be diagnosed as an organ, which is, of course, a weird thing, because what is... Somebody tell me, what is the triple burner? All hollow spaces. Absolutely. All hollow spaces. So all the hollow spaces means that all the hollow spaces outside the solid organs and outside the blood vessels. So every hollow little crevice or cavity or space outside the solid organs and outside the, um, outside the blood vessels belongs to the triple warmer. Right, so the, the very clearly it, the triple warmer uses all the other hollow organs as its proxy, right? But it also uses the empty spaces, the empty pockets between hollow organs and solid organs. So that's what we call the interstices, right? Anywhere that there can be a little bit of gas or a little bit of fluid movement, right? You can have a little pocket even inside your muscles. You know, it, muscles are no do not belong to the solid realm. Like even inside the muscles, there's fluids flowing, there's gas, you can have uh, air bubbles in muscles and stuff like that. So in all of those tissues, that's all part of the triple warmer, right? Therefore, all those hollow spaces, what is the, if you're talking about what's, you know, the in acupuncture points, what's the influential point for all hollow organs? It's, the, it's CV12, it's the front move point of the stomach. And I've mentioned this before also many times, is that to open up any hollow space, all you got to do is open up the stomach. Right? So basically, the triple warmer is an organ that doesn't really exist by itself, but if you want access to it, if you want to open it up, pull things from it, right, get rid of uh, a congestion in it, you can do so by accessing uh, the earth. If it's access, you go through the stomach. If it's deficiency, you go through the spleen. Why? Because the other thing is that I have also mentioned many, many times is that triple warmer and uh, spleen actually are two sides of the same coin, right? The spleen are, is the organ that produces the moisture in which there is qi contained, some gas contained, right? And that is of a nutritious value. So all your physiological moisture is produced through tayin lung and spleen right so when this moisture and that this is the the exact moisture that fills up the fluid matrix of the triple warmer so the moisture in your whole triple warmer comes from tayin tayin spleen and tayin lung right it's a fresh water it's not a salt water it is a fresh water salt water is inside the solid realm Fresh water is inside the hollow realm, right? So it is a fresh water that ev is everywhere in your triple warmer, and that fresh water is produced by tayin lung and spleen. When that water cools off, you have a full body cold dampness pathology, and that's what we call tayin disease. So, and why would that water cool off? Because the chi in that water has cooled off. And why is this chi in the water cooling off? Actually, it's not even the chi cooling off. It's actually the chi has left that water. The warm chi has surged up and has left that moisture. And now that moisture has cooled off. Right? So then you end up with cold dampness disease, which is, triple, uh, which is a tie-in disease. When that wa water warms up, when that water warms up, due to stagnation of ministerial fire circulation, right, the water warms up, then you end up with a warm, damp pathology or a damp warmth pathology. And that's, of course, what we call Shaoyang pathology, which is, uh, in the case of the dampness, we call that a triple warmer, triple warmer problem. Right? But triple warmer and spleen, tayin, are two sides of the same coin. Right? Let's say the person is really dry. That would basically, we call that a Yang Ming disease. Right? But that actually would mean that there's not enough moisture in all the hollow spaces. So it is indeed that the stomach domain, that because we call it Yang Ming disease, the stomach domain is excessive, it's too dry. Because there's not enough Taiyin moisture inside 
the hollow spaces, right? And what often is the product of that? What, what happens when, when that happens in the body? Like what, what will occur? Well, the patient will often have what symptom? Constipation, right? <coughs> and what do we call the constipation Yang Ming patterns? We call them Xiaoyang Yang Ming, right? Remember, in, there's three types of Yang Ming. There's Taiyang Yang Ming, which means you're peeing too much. That's why your stool is so dry. You've got Zheng Yang Yang Ming, true Yang Ming disease, which means indeed, yeah, I have a high fever. My, my Yang Ming is not closing. I'm unable to hold on to my Yang, right? So all the Yang is rushing out. And in the process of doing so, I'm also drying out. And then you have Xiao Yang Yang Ming, which basically means, and this has been the conventional explanation so far, which is that too much dryness of the stomach domain leading to the stagnation of the ministerial fire or, 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 or of the qi failing to descend leading to the constipation pattern. But practically speaking, it is actually also a Xiaoyang Yang Ming because stomach and triple warmer share a very important commonality, which means that all the fluids that the stomach uh, that are in the stomach come from the spleen. All the fluids in the triple warmer also come from the spleen. I mean, I'm saying spleen, but it's tayin, right? Spleen and lung together, right? So when those fluids cool off, Taiyin disease. When those fluids warm up, warm up, Xiaoyang disease. When those fluids dry out, Yang Ming disease. You see? Because the spleen is also diagnosed from the right hand guan. The stomach is Yang Ming disease is diagnosed from the right hand guan. Right? And damp heat pathologies of the triple warmer actually also are diagnosed of the right hand guan. Because they share that very important commonality. So to access the triple warmer, you can, you, the actual hollow spaces, the hollow organ of the triple warmer, you do that through uh, Yang Ming's stomach. Right? So that's why um, Dr. Tian uh, attributed the five hollow dots, which is the stomach uh, <coughs> numerical, uh, to the triple warmer. Right? So that's the second change uh, in the system. Tain lung, tain spleen, straightforward stuff, you know, um, tain lung, four solid dots, it is the white dry metal of the west, it goes with xin, it is yin metal, uh, right swan, that's no big deal, we know that. Tain spleen, uh, you know, the ten solid dots of the center, right, it is the yellow damp earth, it goes with the ji earth, which is yin earth, right hand guan position, no problem there, right, that's all straightforward stuff. Yang Ming stomach, right? Straightforward, right? No problem. Um, uh, it is the five uh, hollow dots of the stomach, right? It is the young earth or the young, uh, the, the young organ, the hollow organ uh, of the middle burner of the stomach, right? Uh, color yellow. It, it belongs to the damp earth of the center. It is Wu earth, which is young earth, diagnosed from the right hand guan. No problem, right? That's all straightforward. Young Ming large intestine, straightforward, nine hollow dots, right? Lots of young there, nine hollow dots, uh, the odd number uh, of the West, which means it is the young organ of the West, which means, you know, it's the young uh, metal organ is the large intestine, right? Uh, color is white, dry metal, it's, the stem is gung, right? And it's diagnosed from the right twin. But here Dr. Tian also introduces one more change, right? And this is, uh, now this change is not necessarily indicated by changing up the numbers that he's telling us, right? But he's basically uh, flipping those kind of, basically he's flipping pericardium and large intestine because when you're thinking about it, the large intestine gets diagnosed in the conventional way from the right hand to end position. But that's when we're talking about the large intestine channel because the large intestine itself is not in the upper burner. Right? Twin positions, I mean, this is a material way of looking at the body, right? A twin position looks at the upper burner. A guan position looks at the middle burner. A chur position looks at the lower burner, right? You have, uh, in your lower burner, you have your large intestine, not in your upper burner, right? So that's why, also here, we need to introduce a bit of a change. Since this is a material system, since this is looking at the actual organs, the location of the organs, the large intestine is diagnosed from the right hand true position, right? As I mentioned uh, in, in, in pulse diagnosis, when we did Shanghan pulse diagnosis before, um, 
The left hand side is about everything that rises and floats in your body. The right hand side is about everything that uh, sinks and descends in your body, right? Everything that goes up and out is diagnosed from the left hand side. Everything that goes down and in is diagnosed from the right hand side, right? Left hand side is the story about blood and young, right? The water element gives birth to the wood element, which fuels the fire element. So it's all about rising upwards, jue yin, the yin that flows reversely upwards, right, to the heart, and then fuels those flames that then float outward to the skin. And then the right hand side is all about yang ming closing, and then the descending quality of the stomach domain and of the metal, which is then, of course, it flows to the surface, it reaches the surface, then it sinks back in, and then it descends back down. Right? So the right-hand side is all about sinking and descending in the body. The left hand is all about ascending and floating in the body. And so, and so when you're thinking about what happened from uh, the fire element on the left gave birth to the, uh, uh, the tai yin on the right. So basically the chi of the lung is born from the blood of the heart, right? By interfacing through the pericardium, right? The chi is born in the upper burner in the pericardium, right hand swan position, it fills up the whole right hand swan position because it it fills up this it creates this cloud in the lungs, in the right hand swan position. Then the lungs breathe in cool fresh air from outside, which turns that cloud into a rain, and then that rain rains down onto the middle burner. Triple warmer has been established, right? Because the triple warmer is of course the organ through which the fluids descend. Triple warmer is not for the ascent of fluids. Fluids only ascend in the solid realm and they descend in the hollow realm. So triple warmer, the fluids will descend from the lung, raining down onto the spleen, into the stomach, seeping into the stomach, and then, of course, continue to seep down. And as they continue to run down the mountain, they get more and more turbid. They take along a lot more silt. They take along a lot more dredges. And then ultimately they reach the large intestine, which is like a trench, right? And it kind of just like uh, uh, all the way towards the north again. All that water flows down towards the north again. So that's why the large intestine has to be positioned in the lower burner, in the, in the right hand shirt position, right? Uh, or no, but for example, what would be a pathology of the large intestine? Well, for example, constipation. And what would be a, a pulse change for young Ming constipation? a long pulse, right? The Neijing also talks about how the chur positions or how long, how the chur positions they speak to what's in the abdomen, right? So it's kind of the same thing here. So the large intestine is going to be put on the right hand chur position, right? And that's why in Yang Ming disease you have long pulses. Otherwise you'd be like, but I know the large intestine is on the right hand chun. Like why in Yang Ming constipation don't we see like a lot of changes on the right hand chun exactly because of that? Because, but I know that's Shanghan. It, in Shanghan, you said it's channel based. It's 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 not, um, uh, it's not uh, uh, material based. Well, it is when there's constipation. The constipation patterns, once that there is actual fecal matter stuck, it's actually already uh, in, the, in within the purview of Jing Wei pulse diagnosis because there's a material blockage of something physical, fecal matter that is dry and obstructing. Right? It is filling up your lower burner physically. It is obstructing the descent of qi of the triple warmer. Right? So the obstruction of the descent of qi, that's, that's, that's functional. But the actual fecal matter, that's material. And it doesn't sit in your upper burner. Right? Some people have it in their brain, but that's a different story. And then uh, Taiyang bladder. Now again, so yeah, then the uh, Taiyang, so the water element, right? Taiyang bladder, Taiyang small intestine, Taiyang um, bladder, one hollow dot uh, in the north, color is black, Ren, which is the, the young water stem, right? That's all pretty straightforward, left hand trip position. Taiyang small intestine is in the south, belongs to the fire element. It is Bing fire, which is young fire, and it's diagnosed from the left hand swim position. Now, what are you going to say now? Say something. Say something intelligent. <laughs> exactly, right? Or no, I thought you were going to talk about, you know, you're talking about functional, right? You're talking about, oh, you're talking about material, right? You're talking about 
organs and things. And How on earth is the small intestine in your upper burner? You know, like it doesn't make sense. Like you just blew your whole own, your own theory out of the water. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, you can blame Dr. Tian. It is an absolutely true. It is absolutely true that theoretically you, we would then also have to put the small intestine where? On the left hand chair position. Right? On the left hand chair position. Yeah? Because um, the organ of the small intestine is indeed also in the lower burner. It is not in the upper burner. Right? So when we're putting the small intestine on the left hand chair we're putting it uh, from a functional perspective, not a material perspective. Now, okay, it's, it's talking about the left-hand side. I think you've noticed that there are no switching around on the left hand. There's only switching around on the right hand, which is indeed your material side. There's no switching around on the right hand. Uh, the second thing is that we don't really, if the, if the, the, if the kind of, Pericardium and lung act as kind of like a proxy, then heart and small intestine act like a kind of proxy, right? What the pericardium is to the lung as far as the, the yin, the nutritive, is the small intestine to the heart as far as protective, as far as yang is concerned, right? But still, it doesn't really explain then where we would put the small intestine as far as the organ. But the organ, you'd still have to put it on the left-hand shirt. That is true, right? But we don't really diagnose small intestine organ problems. Right? Except for, you could say, you know, a lack of young in the small intestine, which is still kind of, I mean, or, or let's say lack of young leading to cold contraction of the small intestine, maybe that becomes a bit more material. It does indeed create what kind of pulse? What, what would be the pulse that goes with uh, a, young, a, a lack of young of the small intestine leading to a cold contraction with abdominal pain? What would be the pulse? And where? Tight, not guan. Actually, tight, sure, right? So, like in Shaoyin disease, when there's a lot of cold in the lower abdomen, like a fuzu pattern, I'm asking for a fuzu pattern pulse, right? The left hand chair position becomes tight, right? So, you could say, well, that actually also speaks to the small intestine. That actually also speaks to the small intestine. But we just don't talk about the small intestine. It's just there's one of those things that you just don't talk about it. And I don't know why, but it's just never uh, discussed, right? Um, and w when you're looking like, for example, like a, uh, uh, um, like a damp heat in the lower burner or something like that, um, you can still diagnose it from the left-hand chair position. You could say, well, yeah, because the damp heat sits, sits in the bladder or no, so that's why. Yeah, but it doesn't originate from the bladder. A damp heat of the bladder originates from the small intestine being too hot and therefore heating up the fluids too much, right? So again, you could say, okay, maybe that then actually also speaks to the left-hand chair position. But when you're, when you're talking about the small intestine and, for example, it having too much heat, and then that heat coming up and harassing the upper burner, causing restlessness and, and sleeplessness, and like the jizu, the gardenia patterns, then it is still nevertheless diagnosed from the left-hand chair position. So the effect of a heat of the small intestine is diagnosed uh, uh, the immaterial effect is diagnosed from the left-hand trun position. If that heat is now in the fluids, then you can diagnose it from the left-hand trun position. Right? Same thing with cold. Right? The immaterial effect of the cold is indeed a, a young deficiency of the imperial fire. Right? Is diagnosed from the left-hand trun position also. Uh, of course, the trun position is also going to be extremely weak and faint. Um, but of course, then if that heat, if that uh, lack of heat, you know, which is this intense deficiency cold, then cools off the fluids, it's also going to be diagnosed from the left hand chair position because that pulse is going to get really tight in the chair position. You see what I mean? So I, c I think that we could see a lot of places where we could interpret the left hand chair position findings as indeed a small intestine change, a change in the small intestine, right? But it's not called as such. And that's, of course, the curse of the whole uh, Chinese medicine. It's just that nobody really spent time looking into the small intestine because of the, the theory of Ming Men that, that was developed. Right? And this kind of just, everybody just was very happy with that. And it's like, okay, that's fine. I can accept that. And, and then we, they, that, they just stopped looking at the small intestine. Right? And so that's, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Good. So, in summary, in summary,
The pericardium is diagnosed from the right hand chun, right? Belongs to the ministerial fire in the upper burner, right? The triple burner is diagnosed from the right hand guan, belongs to the earth and rules the middle burner. And then the large intestine is diagnosed from the right hand chu, belongs to metal, right? Uh, is ruling the lower burner. So it's all about the birth of chi from the pericardium that then descends in liquid form, wrapped in a liquid, through the triple burner, down all the way, accumulating in the large intestine. And of course, the water of the large intestine, that's where most of the resorption happens in your body anyway. So most of that water gets resorbed, reabsorbed into uh, the, the, the aquifer, into the fluid resource, into actually, it is the resorption of the large, of the large intestine that replenishes the yin of the kidneys. I'll give you an example. Well, give me an example. Let's go a little TCM here. It's okay. Um, it's, you know, it's like a controlled experiment, right? It's like uh, we've got blast walls installed and everything. Um, you know, what is a yin tonica for the kidney? Name the ob most obvious one, please. Right? And so, Rimania, Di Huang. Let's just call it Di Huang. Sheng Li Shu Di, you know, let's not even go there, right? So just Di Huang is a yin tonic for the kidneys, right? So you're tonifying the yin of the kidneys. Uh, even in Zhang Nongjing system, right, uh, how does Zhang Nongjing indicate to you that how can you know that the person has had enough Sheng Di and you can stop administering Sheng Di? Black stool, right? So basically, all the way in the run-up, to the person being, let's say their, their, their kidneys are like a receptacle for yin, right? For that thick, turbid, nasty, sticky yin, right? Um, all the way in the run-up to that being all the way full, right? You don't have black stool. So where did the black go? Where did the black go? In your kidney. All that grease was really able, the body was basically still able to absorb it. The body was like, yeah, I'm not yet full. I'm, I want to eat some more. I'm not yet full. Please don't uh, clear the table yet, right? So it was still being absorbed into the kidney. And then all of a sudden, yeah, the kidney is full. And if you put any more shangdi in the body, the kidney's like, oh, man, I'm, I'm good. I'm full. Thanks. You know, like, I can't, I can't fit anymore. I'm totally full, right? So then it just starts coming out from the large intestine. So the kidneys are full, no longer able to absorb any further, and so whatever else you put in, it just comes straight out from the kidney, right? So that's a good proof that indeed the kidney is the one that absorbs, the, the, the resorbs the thick, nasty, thick, greasy, slimy uh, 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 moisture that the body can still use to replenish the kidneys. Right? So that's, that's a, a very important uh, uh, indication of that. Right? So Because how else would metal give birth to water? How else would metal give birth to water? Right? It just, how else would that happen? The metal element, being the lung and the large intestine, give birth to water because all this water comes down and then some of it gets retained in the body, gets reabsorbed into the kidneys. Some of it goes to the bladder and then some of the thick part, the thin part goes to the bladder and you know, replenishes the bladder, and then the thick part goes to the kidneys and replenishes the kidneys, right? Yes? So you're saying the water, water from the large intestine goes into the kidney water and, and blood. Yeah. But there's also a small intestine um, fire heating of the bladder that also puts water back into the blood. Well, because... You know, like we said before, like hollow organs interact with hollow organs and solid with solid. So basically, uh, the water of the large intestine actually goes, doesn't go straight into the kidney. It goes to the bladder first. And then the thick part goes from bladder to kidney. Like they can interact because they're paired, right? So the thick part goes from bladder to kidney. And the thin part, some of the thin goes back up through the wood. And then the, the, the excess of the thin then just goes out as urine. The, large, uh, the small intestine heat that's 
Well, because acting with the live contestant and the and the bladder. Both. Right. From I mean, we always talk about your know, peritoneum and those kind of things, but you can't really establish that type of theory in classical times because nobody talked about that. Yeah, a little bit of Moyen, but even Moyen theory is not really naging naging. It's Naging inspired Ming Dynasty stuff, so it's not exactly original. So you can't really establish that. So practically speaking, as the fluids <coughs> move through, as the fluids move through the <coughs> excuse me, the digestive system, they pass through the small intestine. As they move through the small intestine, they warm up and they are received by the large intestine, right? So then they're already uh, warm, and then they get reabsorbed towards the bladder, and then the bladder uh, also receives a, a warm fluid, right? Uh, that's through the fluid matrix. Of course, through the blood matrix, the blood of Taiyang small intestine and the blood of Taiyang bladder, but then we're talking that is the blood that circulates through the walls of these organs, that blood is connected to each other. That is the same type of blood. So the blood that is circulating through the wall of the small intestine, the blood that is circulating through the walls of the bladder is the same type of blood. So if the blood of the small intestine warms up, then the blood that is fl flowing through the walls of the bladder also warms up and then if there's a liquid inside the bladder and that blood warms up then of course the liquid inside the bladder also warms up right but from the fluid matrix you can't really establish it very directly right one of the ways you should be saying is that when it goes to the small intestine it becomes warmer water then goes to becomes like goes to the large intestine right and then uh, that way gets go from large intestine gives birth to the water element gets resorbed and then goes to uh, the bladder right so from that perspective but as far as the blood physiology, they are connected directly. So then basically, um, the, 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 the whole sequence, you know, like I talked about this also before, the whole, you know, ET phone home uh, kind of sequence, right? So left hand, chirp position gives birth to left hand, guan position gives birth to left hand, twin position, which then gives birth to left right hand, twin position, which gives birth to right hand, guan position, which gives birth to right hand chir position, the right hand chir position, the water feeds into the water of the left hand chir, which then goes up again, right? So it's a story about going up and down and up and down like a continuous unbroken cycle, right? So the left chir water is the water of the lower burner, which uh, ascends to the liver, it gets pumped up, it gets absorbed into the wood, right? Think of the roots of the tree that start to suck it up into the left hand guan position, this moisture, keeps ascending, ascending, ascending uh, through the middle burner all the way up to the heart, right? And it arrives in the left hand twin position at the fire element, right? The blood of the liver gets pumped up all the way back to the heart, right? Where it fuels the, the, the heart's uh, beating and pumping, right? As the engine of the heart can then beat and pump because it is receiving the fuel, right? I mean, there's a million metaphors to use, right? A combustion engine or like uh, an oil lamp, right? You've got the oil of the lower burner. You've got the wick that is uh, soaked in the oil of the wood element of the middle burner. And then you've got the flame on top of the upper burner. I mean, whatever, whichever one you want to you wanna, uh, look at, it's all fine, right? And then uh, heart... The heart starts getting warmer, warmer, warmer. This warmth then, of course, is going to be warming up the metal element because that's now control cycle, right? From that perspective, control cycle. But same thing, you don't have to look at it through control cycle. You can also just put it on the sequence of uh, the six. If you put the six on uh, the generation cycle of the five elements, then imperial fire gives birth to ministerial fire. Ministerial fire gives birth to Taiyin. Taiyin gives birth to Yang Ming. Yang Ming gives birth to Taiyang. Right? So if I put it like this, right? So you've got um, Jay in wood, right? Shao in fire. Then here we have Tai in earth. Yang Ming metal, Taiyang water, right? So that's our normal five element cycle. We're very familiar with that. Well, then we can interject this one here, which is Shaoyang oops, Ministry of Fire here, right? 
Arno. I'm calling bullshit, Arno. I'm not going to accept this any longer. You just keep inventing things. No, I'm not inventing anything at all. 19 lines of, uh, on pathology of chapter 74 starts with the wood line, right? Uh, all, all wind, dizziness, and falling down belong to wood, right? All cold contraction blood belongs to cold, blood belongs to uh, water. But slowly, slowly, it steps back, and it, after it talks about uh, earth, then uh, all of a sudden it talks about, wait a minute, fire, and then it talks about the heart, right? So the, the, the heart line is not line five, which you would, you would think on a five element chart, if you're going against uh, generation, which means you're talking about pathology, then normally the, the, the last one in line it would be the fifth one. No, there's six. The first six, the first line, there's six of them. The first set of lines is six of them, right? Wood, water, metal, earth, ministerial fire, fire, right? So we put ministerial fire, we have to put it in between imperial and tie-in, right? So uh, you know, like, so I'm, I'm not making this up here, right? So the water of the north goes up through wood of Dreyin in the east, reaches the fire in the south. The imperial fire gives birth to the ministerial fire, right? Which then descends through the earth, right? Lung and spleen descending through the earth, flowing down into the earth in stomach and large intestine and connects again with the water element, right? So these are your pulses, right? Left chur, left guan, left chun, right chun, right guan, right chur. And this is an unbroken, continuous, forever going uh, cycle. You see? So that's basically what this is echoing. This is what this is trying to illustrate. <clears throat> Good. Um, so like I also mentioned before, like when we did Shanghan and Paul's diagnosis, right, anything that's on the left-hand side is blood and yang. Anything that's on the right-hand side is qi and yin, right? The more, the more dynamic way of looking at it is from the perspective of wei and yin, right? And then anything that's on the left-hand side, we call the left-hand pulses the yang pulses, right? The right-hand pulses, we call them the yin pulses. Right? So the young pulses have to do with way protective, everything that protects you, which basically means comes to the surface, warms you up, keeps your, preserves your body temperature. Right? The yin basically means uh, nutrition, so anything that nourishes you, that nurtures you. Right? So that's uh, on the right hand side. Everything that protects you, that's functional. Everything that nourishes you is material. Right? So then basically you say that the left hand side, the concept of Shanghan, what we call Wei or protective, is basically blood plus yang equals Wei. And the concept of yin or nutritive in, of, from the Shanghan uh, system is basically qi plus yin. Right? So, what is, uh, what is uh, Wei? Wei is basically blood and yang. Why? Because blood and yang are together. What is young in your body? What is the young of your body? It is the heat that emanates from the blood. The young is the less material, the immaterial warmth that emanates from the blood. If you're using, again, the oil lamp analogy, right? The oil lamp analogy, then basically, right, you've got uh, the oil here then you've got the flame on top, then basically the heat that emanates from the flame, that is yang, right? And the oil in the wick, that's the blood. But I know, what's then the actual flame? That's life. That's the spark of life. That is something you cannot generate. The whole Frankenstein hook him up to uh, a tropical storm doesn't work, right? So basically, the, the heat that emanates from the blood, that's what we call yang. The blood itself is basically the liquid form of yang, right? Yang is the immaterial form of blood, if you want to call it that way, right? And then when we're talking about nutritive, that's the collective term for qi and yin. Qi 
from a Chinese uh, character perspective, you can actually use this character, which is more of a modern character. But basically, that's vapor, right? That's vapor. What's the other the other way of writing qi? Uh, God, that's. I think it's like this. It's like an old, very old way of writing qi. But basically, it has the four dots built in already, which basically talks about vapor. If you this old character is basically the same as this old character, right? They all mean qi. This is a bit more modern character. This is just a modern character in modern Chinese language for vapor or steam. Right? But it's basically what it means, though. That's basically what it means, is that, you know, the qi is the gaseous, the more functional, the more ethereal form of a liquid. And yin is just pure liquid. So if you want to Yin, you can just call it water, shui, right? Yin, you can just call it water. Just like yang, you can just call it huo, heat, or fire. Right? Yin, you can call it water. Yin, you can also call it uh, 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 coolant, like cool, cool, uh, cold, right? And yang, you can just call it heat, right? Qi is basically when you take this water and you turn it into a gas. So the more immaterial form of, of liquid. So yin in a gas form, that's what we call qi. Right? Blood in a gas form, it's not really gas, but that's what we call yang. Right? So, so from this perspective, right, this is the stuff that descends. The gas is born in the upper burner, it cools off, becomes a liquid that descends it through the middle burner, and ultimately accumulates in the lower burner. Right? Here, the blood is basically born in the lower burner. It ascends through wood and it gives birth to the flames of fire in the upper burner. You see, so fire completes in the left chun, water completes <coughs> itself in the right shu. Right? That's basically the idea here that we're looking at. So fire comes to completion in the left uh, chun, right? And water comes to completion in the right chu, because it all accumulates there underground in the aquifer. Right, so that's, uh, that's the sequence right here. Huh? This whole clockwise turning, that is of course life, that's what we call health, that's what we call life. Counterclockwise is when they're talking about pathology, like in the 19 lines, so they talk about pathology, then they talk about it in a counterclockwise fashion. Line one, wood line. Line two, water line. Hey, wait a minute, why? Because it's pathology. It goes against the, the normal flow of life. That's why they ordered them the way they ordered them. Good. Next one, same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, So then, so this is different from uh, this is different from uh, what, what like TCM when they say, oh, qi is yang and blood is yin. Are they wrong? Or no? Are you are you now saying that you're the only one who's right and they're wrong? No, no, no. I'm not saying that at all, or not much at least. Um, no, no. I'm not saying that at all because it's just it depends on what the the lens is through which you're looking, right? If you're looking at a lens that is a bit more materialistic, then you can say that truly. <coughs> Blood is much more material, substantial, than qi, which is kind of like a gas, right? So then the gas is more young, more light, more heavenly, and the blood is more yin, more earthly, right? But here we're looking at it from the functions, and the function of qi and yin is to nourish you, is to move in downward fashion. As it moves in downward fashion, it has a cooling effect. This is the, the right hand side is about everything that keeps you cool. The left hand side is about everything that warms you up. Damage to the left hand side means damage to, what's, uh, to, warm, to your ability to warm yourself up properly. Damage to the right hand side means damage to your ability to keep yourself cool. Right? So then from that perspective, this is the, the side where we look at material substances that nourish you, that cool you. Versus the left-hand side where we look at more the functions of protecting you and warming you up. 
So then that's why we say left hand side is more yang, right hand side is more yin, right? Now if you want to uh, look at it from the, kind of link it with how the TCM looks at it, then you have to say, well yang, that's, or fire, that's what we're going to call, you know, let's say fire and water, right? So then yang, we're going to call that <coughs> yang within yang. And blood, we're going to call it yin within yang. Right? So blood of the yang, the blood is a bit more yin. It's more substance. While fire, that's just pure yang. Yang within yang. Same thing here. Yin, we're going to call that the yin within yin. The pure yin. And then qi, we're going to call that the yang within yin. You see? So then if you're going to say, okay, which one has most yang, most yin, those kind of things, from that perspective, then you have arrived at lao yang, lao yin, shao yang, shao yin, right? That's, you end up with those four again that we talked about in, in, of the old, of the old uh, prenatal trigrams that we talked about where that, that's the, even the ancestor of the six confirmations, right? You end up at the same system again. It's young, but it's, all, it's very little young. There's more yin to it. So that's why we call it shao young. It's baby young, right? So it's still very, you know, not as strong as robust young. It's yin, but it's very young, actually. Of the yin, it's quite young. It's qi, it's a vapor. It moves faster than regular yin would move, right? So from that perspective, that's another way of looking at it. Yes? I was just going to say that it's, uh, it's yin yang within all the time. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So basically, so when, when TCM, they look at the body, they tend to look at just the qi blood lens, and we're look, you're looking without fusing it with the yin-yang lens. So if you combine the qi blood and the yin-yang lens, this is really the only plausible way to look at it. If you're just using a qi blood lens, right, then, then you're looking at the yin within yang and the yang within yin from that perspective, and then you kind of end up with a tai chi, right? From only from a chi and blood perspective, but if you but then they often make the mistake of by having this lens of ju, just doing chi and blood, then they still give it a yin yang label, and I feel that it's confusing because it's then it's a bit too material to look at it because when you're involving yin and yang, you, it's not just only a material way of looking; it's functional, right? So that's a little difference. So yeah, here. Um, Yin at the bottom, yang on the top, which basically means water at the bottom, fire on top, east and west, right? So you could say, of course, the whole, the right-hand side, what you'll start to, uh, what the picture that starts to emerge here is also the picture that um, these, all these guys, this is all on the right-hand side, right? And then that these guys are all on the left-hand side. Like that. So this is left and this is right. right. But it actually does mean that you end up with uh, a lot of stuff on your right hand side, right? Because you've got, uh, you've got a pericardium triple warmer, uh, lung and spleen, young, uh, large intestine, and uh, uh, stomach. If, you, that's by, if we're looking at, at, at a system of six, but in the regular system of the five elements, this baby right here just folds into these babies. You see what I mean? Like if you're just looking at five elements, right, then basically these, you have to just know that implicitly the triple warmer and spleen are impl implicitly forming a pair. That lung and pericardium are implicitly forming a pair. Because in, five, in the system of five, there's no ministerial fire. Did you get? You know what I mean? Like so, if it's just like five elements, like wood, fire, earth, metal, water, uh, then it's like where did these go? Well, they're actually folded into still the right hand side. Now, for example, like this. So if you have five elements, right? Fire, water, uh, 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 wood, uh, earth, metal, right? So water wood, fire, then if I say, well, you know, these guys 
are the story of the left hand. And then it looks like the right hand has not been dealt a big a, as big a hand as the left hand, right? Because on the, and then for the right, there's only, there's, only, there's only two elements. Well, actually, because the other ones are implicit inside of them. That's what I mean. Right? So actually, then the, here, you have to keep these, you have to pericardium and triple warmer are all a part of these, that whole system here. That's, I, mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just making it more confusing. Um, right? So uh, the water, fluids of the water, they quell up, they are absorbed into the wood of the east. The east, the wood of the east, you know, pumps the blood because it means it goes back into the bloodstream because yin or water does not flow against the force of gravity uh, by itself unless it is contained in a tube, in a pipe, and is getting, and it's connected to a pump. Right? I've given this example before. Somebody's standing on the, on the second floor. Hey, no. Uh, can you bring me, up, bring me some water up? And I'm like, take a bucket and I just chuck a bucket of water up to the second floor. Is it ever going to reach the second floor? How can you just catch it? Is it? Yeah. It's like, just catch it, bro. I mean, it's never going to be a meaningful uh, transfer of liquids because to transfer a liquid from the lower floor to the upper floor, it has to be pumped upwards, right? So that's why for, for water to flow against the force of gravity, it has to be in a tubing system and it has to be connected to a pump. That's why for jue yin, for the yin to go jue, and jue means against the force of gravity, against the direction of gravity, right? Reversely, right? It has to be somehow inside a tubing system, right? So the water element passes through the marrow, becomes salty, goes into the bloodstream, is allowed into the bloodstream, right? And then it, once it's in the bloodstream, it's connected to the tubing and to the pump. So then as the heart pumps, slowly on every beat, this water pumps up a bit back to the heart, right? It, when, when it comes to the heart, there's like it's, the fuel comes through the fuel line. It, uh, arrives at the, uh, it arrives at the carburetor, right? The spray nozzle sprays the fuel. The spark plug of life sparks it, and the combustion happens, and energy is created, young is created, right? During the process of combustion, right, there is heat created, and during the process of the combustion, there is kinetic energy released, which is then, of course, the transfer of, uh, and the birth of chi. And then that kinetic energy can feed into the extremities and movement and things like that. So that's basically the story, you know, using the combustion engine as an example. Right? So that's basically here, the water of the yin, the rich fluids, they quell up, they nourish the wood, right? The blood of the wood rises and fuels the fire. The fire, when the engine is then going, right? The heart is beating, it's pumping, it's active, right? It heats up, right? You think of all this combustion happening inside the metal, that metal gets red, glowing hot, and it heats up, right? So then you have a process of evaporation that, pro that happens, Why? Right? Look at your engine, your car engine. If you don't have enough coolant liquid, you see that temperature gauge of the engine go up. That's exactly the same process. Because of the combustion, the, the, the energy that's being produced, there's also an increase in temperature. So then when the engine overheats, you open the, 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 the hood of the car, what happens? Steam comes out, right? Exactly. The liquids that are in the engine will heat up and turn into steam, right? Exactly the same here. So then the pericardium starts to produce the steam. The steam is caught inside the lungs, right? So that's what we call fire gives birth to chi, which we basically is imperial fire gives birth to ministerial fire, or in other words, chi is born from blood, right? This is, starts to evaporate, starts to sweat. And then, of course, uh, this chi uh, is born in the upper burner. And then, of course, because you're breathing, the chi cools off when it, when it encounters the cooler air, that you're breathing in, and then rainwater is born. That's, of course, what we call the birth of water by in the lungs. So the lung is the source of all water, right? And that's basically, then this water then rains down, the descending cool moisture rains down on the earth. It, dry, it, warms and mo it cools and moistens the earth and replenishes the water back in the north. So the story is one of this water to go into this tube has to become salty. So it passes through the marrow, becomes salty, it salinates, becomes salty, is allowed into the bloodstream, pumps up to the heart. When it sweats out through the pericardium membrane, then the salt stays behind inside the vessel, most of it. I mean, some salt. I mean, our sweat still tastes salty, but it is not as salty, as much salt as you actually have inside the solid realm, 
right? So most of the salt stays behind, and actually the uh, evaporation process is basically one that it desalinates, right? Just like the ocean, uh, when the ocean is exposed to the sunlight, right? The water evaporates, but the rainwater that falls down is, is fresh water. It's not as salty. Though it, it originally all came from ocean evaporation off the ocean because most of the salt stayed in the ocean. Most of the salt stayed in the ocean of blood and then the fresh water is what evaporated and created the rain. Right? So this is the birth of fresh water. This is the birth of salt water. Right? So the, the chi is wrapped in the fresh water as it descends. Uh, yeah, let's take a little break first.